So, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new base model called SDXS. Now this is going to be the SDXS 512 model that we're going to be dealing with. Um, its big claim is an inference of 100 FPS, which is 30 times faster than SD 1.5, and 30 FPS, 60 times faster than SDXL on a single GPU. So that's their aim with this model, fast inference. Okay, that's pretty cool. There's also going to be a 1024 model release. At the moment, we've only got the 0.9, so pre-release SDXS 512. I'm told it, was, it has some 2.1 in the architecture, but it's really not that simple. So uh, if we have a look at the architecture here. So it's all explained on the GitHub. So go ahead and read that if you want. There's some performance comparisons for you. So you can take a look at the 2.1 base versus the 512 SDXS and then SDXL versus SDXS 1024, which I'm sure we'll cover when it releases. So it's also got some good examples. So here's SD 1.5 and here's SDX. SDXS 512. There's SDXL. And in the future, we'll be getting this one, which is uh, interesting. It looks a bit like DALI or uh, a more modern engine. So, anyway, let's dive in because we've got a cool image to image thing here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Ooh, control net. Mm, interesting. So, let's take a look at my workflow collection. The workflow collection includes a basic text to image, image to image, and then also text to image and image to image with my Zenkai system, which is showing how you can load 2.1 LoRa's. There are incomplete layers because really you need to train it on SDXS. Because of the shared architecture, enough layers load that it's usable. All right. It's not as accurate, but depends what you're generating. Also, I've got my Zenkai model. We'll get to that. So the way you're going to need to install this, guys, is you're going to need to download these three files, rename them, and place them into the directories as shown. So then you'll be able to see under Unit Loader, you'll be able to pick the Save Tensor, and then under Clip, the Clip, and under VAE, the VAE. I just grabbed them all fresh rename them, put them in SDXS folder so it's easy for me to pick them out. It doesn't really matter, that's up to you. But if you do this, it'll work. A bit like Cascade, we're evaluating a brand new model again, which is fun. I've got an article here with a little bit more information, mostly just the GitHub. But I'll add some more stuff here as and when. This is my 2.1768 model. And the thing about 2.1 law is where they were compatible with the 512 base. So I thought I'd give it a try and it worked. So, so this would be, these are the files that you're going to need. The links are obviously in the description and in this uh, bit in the uh, description of the model and on the article page. So if you go onto the, the model where you can download the workflow pack, or if you go onto the article, where we've also got it written here, because I don't know where you're going to come into it. Um, grab the LoRa, Beta 2. Beta 3 is coming soon. I just need to put some screenshots up and I can release that. It's a little bit bigger, basically. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So you grab yourself the unit, text encoder, and VAE, and then we can jump into the workflow. Now, the basic workflows are a lot simpler and they include the one that comes from Comfy UI. There is a default workflow. And then we've built upon those. So if I start at the core of it, that would be the best place. So at its core, we have a UNET loader, a clip loader, and a VAE loader. I also use my aspect size custom node with 512 by 512 SD setting. All right. I've got a primitive for my seed for the generation. I can fix it there if I want. Uh, we've got the empty latent going into the K sampler, and then let's go back the other way. In fact, no, we'll deal with the prompt last. 
You'll notice I've got a lorry loader switched off at the moment. Okay, so then we save the first pass. And then just like my Ananke detailer workflow, we send it back into itself. So we take the output from the first pass, use the same dimensions, use VAE encode for image to image. We're going to do it at 1D noise and the same sampler and everything else. Interestingly, SDXS uses one step and one CFG. So it's very fast. Uh, and then we upscale the image. All right. Now, if I quickly have a have a look at the bit I skipped, because this is just text to image. All right. This is text to image and text and then image to image. So text to image to image. There you go. Right. Now, what I've done here is I've used, uh, this is like a custom wildcard setup. So again, I'm going to start at the back. All right, we'll start at the back. <clears throat> but this is a display of the negative prompt. This is a display of the positive prompt. That's Python GOS uh, comfy, uh, custom node. And it's using one button prompt custom node and dynamic prompts custom node. So we're using it all together. So this is what the prompt actually is running right now, the top one. And what we're doing is we're saying automatic negative. So I put in a, f a few things I want to put in, and then it will generate a negative prompt for me in the format of the model I'm in. Now, there isn't an SDXS yet, so I've been trying them out, and I think it uses Clip H, so I think you'd have the best success with the model which is using clip h but sometimes i like to experiment because you never really know um so our positive prompt is going into the negative auto negative then it's generating us a negative so that's what's going on there all right for the positive prompt it's kind of the same thing we have a magic prompt which is adding stuff to the prompt right um and then our actual text that we're controlling is coming in here. So there's a seed. So we can control whether it stays the same. Same with this. So with the negative prompt and the magic prompt and the text random line, they're all driven by the same seed generator. All right. Um, so that means we can obviously fix it if we want, which is something that I'll do. You know, I'll just explore the seed, keep everything else the same. We have a text concatenate. The D is style and the weight. So that's the weight of the style. The Zenkai system comes with hundreds of styles, which you can kind of key into for your prompt. Um, uh, Desu is the full captions list. So this would be all the captions in the Laura. And then the Zenkai style is just the style triggers not the whole thing so here we have da, 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 style 0.6 so what we're doing here is we're saying bracket whatever is picked by the random line style bracket right so normally it would be like this so i'm just taking the actual name of the sub model in the laura all right so if you think this is b c d a is our manual prompt and this would have a higher weight because if this has got 0 0.6 right then this is going to have one and over average this will be more important so because there's a lot of other stuff which is going to have an averaged out weight which will be much lower so essentially we're saying depiction of a and then we're using a randomizer society cat house chicken landscape i just wanted to get a bunch of random pictures um, and then put through the stylization as per the seed. So I can use this number to control which style is coming out. And again, so it would have the piece of the prompt I want to be most important, followed by the style key, followed by the magic prompt, and then the automatic negative. And that just gets piped into our clipping code is just what you'd normally expect so there we go now if i don't have the laura on 
this is going to create quite a complex uh, prompt generator. So with it on, it's going to key directly into the pre-trained LoRa style model. So that's the idea there. So then we make our image and we refine it. So let's just, it's on random right now. So if I just queue, queue up 10 images and I have to point out and you can see it in the, in here, I can't, I'm not sure. I don't want to assume exactly, but there's no error with these input blocks. But then these ones, these, these layers are missing. So what's that? Layer 23, layer 23, a whole bunch of layer 23 stuff. But I don't, I'm, I'm not, you know, this doesn't line up with what I know about it. So I don't want to just guess. So now we'll turn the LoRa on. And, you know, me, I've trained the model. I know that this is closer to what was trained. I mean, it's not perfect. I'll give you that. But this is closer to what was trained. Look at this. It'd be interesting to see what this looks like when you have a properly trained LoRa. And like I said, if I was to turn this off again, it's giving me images which are closer to... And like I said, I'm I'm using this big magic prompt setup right now. Um, we can just shift click it, bypass the whole thing, come in here, right click and text the widget. And then this one also text the widget, put that up there, put that here. And then we could just say something like a cat, right? Make one image just to show you, you know, what to, what, what, so this is what you would have got. And this is what you end up with, with the uh, image to image thing going on. Um, I may as well show you what I found here as well, because if I was to just go 0.5, Five. Normally, you would expect. I think there must be some trick. There must be some trick to doing image to image with this. Probably um, will come out in time, like it did with Cascade. I don't know. But if you see here, image to image at point. Whoops. Image to image at point five. It does make it better. Like this is quite blurry, and it's become finer. Um, 0.75 and like I said for making this sort of drawn style stuff I would think that for print like printing um just there's certain types of art styles that are going to work really well with this model but I don't think unless there's some magic token for getting it into uh photo mode because like i say the normal way was usually to negative painting i don't know why i'm in caps lock painting drawing sketch well this is how i used to get it to work anyway it's since one since 2.1 it works in excel drawing sketch uh yeah it's fine bake was another one we'd usually put as well put that in and it doesn't really work like you'd expect it still looks like it's a painting if i say photo of a cat yeah it's a bit better i suppose it goes there I'll go like that i mean this is where I start to think, oh, th this is where you end up just endlessly tweaking values. Because if, if I'm being honest, it's to taste and it depends what you're doing. Like right now, photo of a cat is a bit, whoops, generic. So if maybe we just go to 0.5. We've gone from that to that. It is sharper, but you can see it's actually messing up. That looks a bit more realistic. Uh, just to show you what it looks like with one. If we 
be quite a drastic change, I would have thought. <laughs> it's funny, it's almost like where you get details, it becomes less coherent. So you end up going with like, I don't know, point four. So it's just a light pass like that. Ah, that looks okay. That, I mean, it doesn't look good. <laughs> But it doesn't look bad. It, definitely, it's an improvement from, from. I would think it's an improvement from there to there. Just a little bit sharper, because it's easy to make things soft. You, it's harder to make things sharp. So I, if I was going to do something, I'd want to start off too sharp, and then you know, you, it's easy to blur. Um, but anyway, um, and like I said, you could just let it run. Maybe add some more tokens. Uh, anyway, so I'll do a bit more on the magic prompt thing in another video, uh, but it was worth showing that off. The actual pack has a bunch of simple workflows. So if I just show you one of those. So this is the basic workflow that you get with Comfy. I'm not going to go through it, but it's essentially what I've got just a little bit. Uh, like I say, it's the exact same thing, pretty much. You get mine. I've just moved things around a bit, coloured them, reordered them, added in the upscaler, giving you the, your Laura loader, and then I'm using my aspect sizer. But you don't, you could use any aspect sizer. Um, and to be honest, it I just put it into 512 by 512. It's, it makes it easy. I don't have to calculate weird numbers. Um, and also, it comes with a default of Eula and SGM uniform. So you know, let's give it a give it a blast on the default. Watercolor glitch sums. Yeah, this is one of mine. So if I was to turn, if I was to fix the seed, just make sure that we're getting the same image. So there's the, there it is. There's my. I just want to bypass. So no Laura, and that's what you should get. And if you've seen my glitch slums model before, you'll know it looks it looks more like this. It's really busy. There's loads of houses on the side, like all up the mountain and stuff and trees and um but so yeah, you that's what you get normally without my Laura, which is still really good. Like depends what you're trying to do. I think this is a really useful model. Um, like I said, you can have lots of fun with this. Um, if I was to show the image to image, image to image model. So let's get, so let's get an image. Like let's get this cat, put him in there and go probably need to say a cat somewhere. <laughs> it's already a cat. I'd say a uh, robot cat. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to get an award for these prompts. There we go. It doesn't look anything like the original image, though. You see what I mean? And what have I got it on? 0.75. So I'll put it on 0.5. And then it just looks like the original image. What? Where does it where does it change over? At point five one, it just changes over. Yeah, I think there must be a trick to making image to image work. But when that comes around, because I remember if I was looking at the uh, text to image, seems pretty easy to pull off with what we've got. But the actual image to image workflow seems to have it references Control Net, and I don't have Control Net. I don't know. It says here. Image to image. So we haven't got that yet. So anyway, I'll keep you posted. Um, have fun with the new model. It is very quick. So if there's something you want to use that for, it might be a good option. Until next time, thanks for watching.